Okay. We left off on Chav Gimel on base 23b. We're holding over here the Gemara asked the question according to Shimon al who's of the opinion that the Evid Kanani, the Kanani slave, he does not have the capacity to receive his own get shikur, his own writ of emancipation. Is he able to make a shliach to receive the get shikur on his behalf? So do we say, just as a woman is a, a woman, she's able to make a shliach, an agent, to receive a divorce, so the Evid Kanani, also similar to the woman, is able to make an agent to receive the document the writ of emancipation, or we say, no, a woman who herself has the capacity to receive the get, she's able to appoint an agent, but he who does not have the capacity to receive the get, because Rabbi Shimon Loza rejects the concept of Gita Vyodah Bon Kechot, she's not able to make the agent to receive the get, Shikhar. that was the question that was posed, and the Gemara concludes, Rabbi concludes, we have Xer Shavalola Bi'isha, we equate the Evid Kanani to the woman, just as the woman can make the shliach, he could also make the shliach. I just want to go a little further. I discussed this for a while last week. So, Mar asked a question. We're uh, about seven lines into the Gemara. Lolo, Zereshava. Because it's really the way I understood it was, it's a circumstance. It's a circumstance. If you say, the reason is my hand is the hand of the master, right? That's the reason why he can't receive it. So you have an obstacle that he's not able to. But if I appoint a shliach, right? The shliach is the equivalent of myself, but he doesn't have my handicap. My handicap is because I'm the I'm the chattel of the master. The agent's not the chattel of the master. See, if you say, let's say, a non-Jew, or we spoke about um, there's a question that Martin discussed in, in Bav Mitziah. The Kohen appoints a shliach to marry a grusha on his behalf. You have the question. When we normally say, Eishlich L'Garavera, you cannot make an agent Delegate an agent to do a sin, let's say to steal. Mm -hmm. So the agent's not permitted to steal, and the one who commissions the agent's not permitted to steal. That's usually the case of Angel Varadero. Shlichos, the, the concept of agency, does not work within the context of, of a sin. What about if the Shliach himself, he's a non Kohen, he's permitted to marry a divorcee, and the one who commissions the agent, he's a Kohen? The question is do we apply the principle of Angel Varadero? question. So over there you could say because even if the Cohen would marry her it's a valid marriage although he's doing the wrong thing. So you could say over there because the agent himself is not doing the Avero even though the result of his action is not, causes an Avero because now he's married to the Cohen. but that, that's the question. So similarly here why can he not receive the get for himself? Because he's the chattel of the master. His hand is the hand of the master. But what about if he delegates it through an agent? The agent is not the chattel of the master. So if that's the case, he has the capacity to receive it. That's the conclusion of the Gemara. But the Gemara has a question. Again, the Torah says, put it this way, the Torah says, uh, or Evet canonically can be emancipated. Except we have, so we have to somehow circumvent the problem. To give it directly to him, we're not able to work it out because he, his hand is the hand of the master. But if I'm able to circumvent it, so again, he has the capacity to be emancipated, to be emancipated. The question is, but how do I circumvent the issue? So I would say that logic would say that the Torah empowers him to make the agent. Of course, he has the capacity to be emancipated. Except I have this issue. So how do you reconcile the two of them? So it would make sense to say that it's only a handicap 
but is, but in fact, he does have the power. But the Gemara is going to ask exactly what you're saying. The Gemara is going to ask on that and now, and the Gemara is going to answer, make a differentiation. We'll see in a moment. Hani Kohani Shluch de Rachmono Ninu. Rafuna says, Rafuna Bishuva says, Kohanim are definitely God's agents. They're not the agents of the person. What, what does it mean? They're the God's agents. When a person gives his korban to a Kohen to officiate on his behalf, correct? So we said, Shchitik Sheru Bazar. The slaughtering of the korban, any Jew could do that. So I could commission anyone to do the shechita, because I could do the shechita. But what about from the point of receiving the blood going forward? Receiving the blood, transporting the blood, sprinkling the blood. The only one qualified to do that is who? Is only the Kohen. So if that's the case, could you even consider saying that the a Kohen is the agent of the Yisrael? Of the non-Kohen? Agency means um, giving you the power to do what I could do. You're empowered to do what I could do. What I'm permitted to do. But if you're not permitted to do it, how could you be the agent? I'm representing you. Shlich Shom Kamoso. When you do it, it's the equivalent of what? Of the Yisrael's doing it. But the Yisrael's not permitted to sprinkle the blood. He's not permitted to receive the blood. It's not valid. See, but there's a difference there. See, there, because the Moors can make a differentiation. There, it's, it's, the question is, what are you qualified? Here's the question of qualification. A non Kohen is not qualified to receive the blood, transport the blood, sprinkle the blood. Here, why is the Evid Kanani not qualified to receive the get? Not that he's not qualified. He doesn't have the capacity. It's not a halocha. It's a circumstance. Here we're dealing with a circumstance. Because he's the chattel of the master, his hand is the hand of the master. So when you put the get shikhar in his hand, it's like the master putting it in his own hand. He doesn't have the capacity to receive. It's not a halocha. It's, it's a circumstance. That's, that's, there's a difference between a circumstance yeah, and... and no, but the Gemara is going to make that differentiation in a moment. The Gemara is asking that as a question now. But the Gemara is going to make that differentiation. Because there, it's, 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 it's the halocha. You're not qualified. Because only a Kohen is qualified. Here, it's not... You're not qualified because in, in your essence, it's lacking qualification. It's the circumstance because you happen to be the child of the master. But you have relevance to receive a get shechor. We'll see. These are the dark shluchim didaninu. Rav Huna Breid B'Yushua says, if you would even consider saying that the kohen is the agent of the non-kohen of the one who brings the korban, mikamidi the ana lo matzina avdino and vino motzi avdi, is it possible something that you're not able to do yourself, and what and the kohen is able to do? How could you empower somebody with something which you're not empowered to do yourself? If you're not qualified to officiate, how could you delegate that right? You, it's, you're not delegating. You don't have that right. Samar says, but we see over here, we're saying differently. No, what it, that's what it means. It means he's obligated to officiate. You go to a co and says, I want to bring my korban. He says, I'm not interested. What do you mean? You're obligated. So what does it mean you're obligated to do? I mean, God dictates, you must, that's your obligation. So you're, God's, you're doing God's work. That's what it means. This means you're God's agent. You're doing God's work. That's what it means. That's what it means. That's Shluch HaDerachmona. You're God's agent. Right? Somebody says, V'lo, v'avdo, di'il lo motzi mekabal gito. So we're, we're asking, according to Rebbe Rudna Brek, the Yerushua who says that logically, something that you're not empowered to do, you cannot delegate, but what he's saying over here, the slave himself cannot receive the get. Va'avda lo motzi b'kabal gito, gite, the Evet Kanani does not have the capacity to receive his writ of emancipation. Shlich motzi mashvi. So we see, so seemingly, lola mi'isha refutes what we're saying. We see here, although the slave does not have the capacity to receive the get shichrur, he has the capacity to delegate versus a lowi. They're not comparable. They're not comparable. Although by the korban, we say there, he clearly he's not the agent of the Israel, but over here he could be the agent of the Evit Kanani. Why? 
Yisrael lo shaychi b'toros korbon is klal. A nad kohen is not has no relevance to officiating. He's not qualified to officiate in his in his essence. Right? The Torah says only a kohen is qualified to officiate. A non kohen is not qualified to officiate. So if that's the case, how could you delegate something that you're not qualified to do? Ever shaych begitin. An evid has relevance to receive a get. He can. The Tanya. Nirin had dvorim she evid m kabogito shall have miyadrabu shall have. Proof that it's only the circumstance. Nirin Dvarim, it's logical to say, let's say one co- a master wants to give a writ of emancipation to the slave of another master to accept the get on behalf of his slave. The slave has a capacity to receive it to receive it. The master could delegate the slave, someone else's slave, to receive the get on behalf of his slave. So what does that mean? That means he has relevance to, to Gittin. That means he could, he could function. He could function in the capacity to receive a get. Right? That he has the capacity to receive a get. Because in there, we've circumvented the handicap. The obstacle. The obstacle is he's the chattel of the master. So to give the, the get directly to him, why can't we give it to him? Or on behalf of, let's say, a co-slave owned by the same master. Because since his hand is the same hand as the master, because he's the chattel of the master, the master hasn't given the get outside of his own domain. He has to give it outside of his own domain. He has to put it in someone else's hand. But what about if it's someone else's slave, although he's an Ebed Kanani, and he's the agent to receive on behalf of his slave, but this slave is not the chattel of the one who's emancipating his slave. Yeah. He can yeah. But from his, to receive the get from his own master, he cannot. So what does that tell us? It's a circumstance. That's how we're differentiating. Regarding officiating in the Beis Amigdosh, a person is not a coin, he's not qualified to officiate under any circumstance. So if that's the case, of course you're not able to delegate it. How could I delegate something that I have no relevance to? But since I see a slave has the capacity to receive a get, and the only reason is because why you can't receive your own get is because you're the chattel of the master. So it's not something innate in the slave, in the halacha. It's the circumstance. Because we have to find a setting where he has a capacity, where the circumstance doesn't interfere. What would that circumstance be? We're just accepting it on behalf of another slave, a slave of another master. Good. Not a proof, it's not a question. We're asking it as a refutation on, on the law. No, 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 no. It's the answer to refutation. I don't see it as an answer. To refutation. What's the question? What's the question? The slave, the slave can receive anything from anybody. It just automatically, whatever he's receiving, it automatically transfers to his master. If somebody were to put some gold in his hand, it doesn't belong to him. It belongs to his master. Why? Why does it belong because to his master? He, is, he has no inherent ability to own, and if it comes into his domain, it's coming into his master. Immediately. 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 So, so his hand is... Into his hand, it automatically transfers into his master's hand. Good. It's no different than that third party putting it into his master's Correct. That's all that so we're saying the obvious. There's no... It doesn't so they're not they're comparable. Different. No. Originally we asked it as a... Qu- we wanted to refute the position of Rav Huna Rav Yeshua. Rav Huna Yeshua says a coin must be the agent of God. He cannot be the agent of, of the, the non coin Right? That's what he says. Of course, the, he's saying there, there's a rationale to it. Something that you're not able to do yourself, how could you delegate it? He says, we have a case here. Yeah, right From Lolo, the Xerxia reveals that although the slave himself cannot receive to get himself, he's able to get delegated through an agent. Right? That was the question. That was the question that we asked. The, the, the Xerxia reveals that what? That although seemingly... What Rav Huna Rav Shua is saying is logical, but we see the Torah overrides that. That although the person is not able to do it himself, receive it himself, do officiate himself, he's not able to receive to get himself. He could delegate it through a, through a, through a third party. So the, what the Gemara is saying, no, the different. What Rav Huna Rav Shua is saying is different than what we're speaking about here. Delegating through a third party, it's what I'm showing, is only a circumstance. Not being able to officiate is not a circumstance. It's, it's not qualified because you have to be a coin to, to be qualified to officiate. So, what well, is saying that they're really, what we're moving here from, from the slave case is that the, from the 
that there really is no other case where that you can. Uh, it's really only about shliach uh, of Hashem. Because that's, there's no other case where you're not able to be uh, an avoda at the shliach. In other words, right? The the kohen. That's the only case where you're not able to be a shliach, uh, and uh, that's why that's that's what he proved. Rafun is saying it within that context there. Rafun is speaking specifically, he's proving that a Kohen is not the, is not the agent of the Yisrael. Right, he's God's agent. Right. Why Why can he not be the Yisrael's agent? Because anything you cannot do, you si do, do yourself, you cannot delegate. So if you just go based on the words, we have a problem with our situation. Right? Something you cannot do, you cannot delegate. So right. what about the Evid? The Canaanite slave, he's able to delegate to appoint an agent to receive the get on his behalf, and he himself cannot. Right. So that refutes the, the rationale of Rehunda Rebbe Shua says, no, they're not comparable. Right, because the slave can accept uh, a get -get. On behalf of another slave. Exactly. So, it's, so what does that reveal? That reveals it's only a circumstance. Exactly. But over there, it's not a circumstance. It's a reality. You're not qualified. You have to be a coin to be qualified to officiate. What if the other one the other says, I don't want you to be the get -get. So you're taking the get -get for some for another event. Doesn't make a difference. Doesn't doesn't, doesn't make a difference. Yeah, but he's qualified. Whether let's say the master opposes, let's say the master says, "I don't want you to acquire to pick up something," and he does pick it up. See, receiving a get shichur. If it's a question of acquisition, you're right. If it's an acquisition, you're right. You don't have the capacity to re to acquire. But here, it's just receiving. If I am him, I could receive. Right? It's not an act. Get sheikh you don't have to acquire. So the Arab, the Arab doesn't apply? Then? Doesn't apply. Since theoretically, if let's say the master would want, I should receive on his behalf. It's not even the question. Right? So even though he's opposed today, it doesn't make a difference. But factually, I have the capacity to receive a get. I have that capacity. And what is receiving a get sheikh It's not an acquisition. It's just putting it in his hand like a woman, right? A woman, you, you divorce her whether she wants to be divorced or not. Just putting the get in her hand. She's divorced. David, you still have difficulty? Explain what you're saying. What was the question originally? And yet, and yet he can receive the gift from no, 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 no. Before, what was the question originally? The Gemara asked the question. Rav Hunver and Yeshua stated a principle: something that you're not able to do yourself, you cannot delegate. So, we, but we're saying it's it's incorrect because we just proved from Lolo Misha by the slave that he could delegate it through a third party, although he cannot accept it himself. That was the question, right? That was the question. Wait, wait, you know, you're missing a point here. Again, the Gemara, he, he resolved, re, Rabbi posed the question, could a Canaanite slave make a shliach, appoint a shliach to receive his get or cannot? Right, that was the question. It says he resolved it by saying he can. Why? Lo lo mi'isha. Just as a woman can, the slave can. Although he himself cannot receive the get himself. Although he does not have the capacity to receive the get, he could appoint an agent to receive a get on his behalf. That was the conclusion. Correct? Rabbah. Samar asked the question, but Rafun Rav Yeshua says, pr proves that a Kohen must be God's agent, cannot be the non-Kohen's agent. Right? So we, we have a contradiction here. Because that, he's saying something contrary to what the Gzera Shev is saying. Gzera Shev says, although you cannot do it yourself, you don't have the capacity yourself on a personal level, but delegate, you can delegate. So say the same thing here. Although the non coin does not have the capacity to officiate, you're able to appoint an agent to officiate on your behalf. That's exactly what we're saying by the slave. The slave cannot accept it, doesn't have the capacity to receive it again himself, but he can delegate it through, through a third party. Wait, wait, wait. That's the question. So now the commerce makes a differentiation. They're not, they're not comparable to two cases. 
even though no, 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 the Isha itself has the capacity to acquire. The Eben itself does not have the capacity to acquire, so how do you learn from, from law? Like no, well, that, 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 that was a question anyway, because the Gemara yeah, posed two part. sides to the question. When it says, Lola Isha, <laughs> does it have to be exact like the woman? <laughs> and he's not? Right. Or do we say it doesn't make a difference? Right. Mercy see, concludes, Lola says it doesn't make a difference. So he favored one side of it. It doesn't make a difference. We didn't understand why. The answer is because it's only a circumstance. Right. That's why he favored that. So that Mars says, but then we have difficulty from what? From the case of Rafun Rebu Shua by the Kohen. And that's exactly what the Gemara is clarifying now. Lola Mi'isha, what the Torah is saying over there, since it's only a circumstance, that's the reason why he could appoint the Shliach. By the Kohen, it's not a circumstance, but it's, it's a qualification. You're not qualified to officiate. So if you're not qualified to officiate, how could you appoint a shliach to act on your behalf? You have no relevance to that whole function. No one could do it except the Kohen. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Right, right. David, you still have difficulty. Do you understand the question? First, I understand the question. Yes, yeah, so, okay, so what was the question? The Lola Mi'isha tells us what? That even though the slave is not qualified, to receive it himself, he could appoint an agent to receive it. Yes? What does Rufun Barib Shua say regarding the Kohen officiating? He cannot be the Shliach of the one who brings the Korban. Since he's not qualified to bring the Korban, this Kohen cannot be his agent. That's what Rufun Barib Shua says. Is it contradictory to what we're saying? Okay, so the question you understand. So what's the difference? There's a difference. Where? No, 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 no. Again, again. We have to go back a little further. The Gemara said, every, even Rav Huda Mishua says in the Mishnah that a slave could be emancipated when the third party receives to get on his behalf. Correct? But yet, despite that, the Gemara still had a question, could he appoint a shliach? That, that was, the, we, we didn't do Tosis inside. So evidently, so Tosa says, asks as a question, if a third party could receive the get on his behalf, why appointing a shliach should that make it worse? Without a question, the Mishnah says clearly, according to Rav Hunda, Rav Yeshua, Rav Shimon Elozer, a slave could be emancipated when the master gives the, the get shikhar to a third party. So remember we spoke about, maybe shi is lab mitam shlichus. Maybe the mechanics of shi, you're not, you're not an agent. Right? Yeah. But what if, so Morris says, but what about if he does appoint him to be the agent? Right? Is he considered the agent of the slave or not? And the master is only giving it to the agent as an agent, <coughs> not as a merit, <coughs> as, a, as a benefit to the slave. I'm giving it to you because you are the slave. You are the equivalent of the slave. So if he's qualified to make a shliach, the slave is emancipated. But if he's not qualified, then he's not emancipated. Because the man I'm giving to, it doesn't represent the slave. And he's only accepting it as the agent of the slave. That's how Tosis learned. It's more complicated than you think it is on that point. point. Yeah, Marvi. No, 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 no. No, but that's not a circumstance. That's a status. You, you, you qualify. Either you qual you're a coin or not a coin. Here, here, it's the chattel. It's purely. It's a monetary issue. It's not a qualification. You understand? We're showing. So it's not the coin. It's the Israel. The Israel can't. Be That's why I'm asking. Exactly yeah, yeah. That, that is the difference. That that is the difference. That is right. the difference. The Israel can't become. A that is the difference. Right. right. Either you're endowed as a coin, you're not, or you're not a coin. No, according to according to Rabbi Shimon Alosa, cannot give give a gift to his life. Everything he gives to back to his Correct. Correct.
is that reverts back. It's like taking something from your right hand, putting your left hand. Exactly. Exactly. No, it's not. It's not the Ebed's appointing the shliach. The master, the other person's master, is appointing this slave as the shliach. Not the slaves appointing the slave. Understand? It's not the slave appointing him as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a, his agent. Okay. Let's do the tosis over here. Next to the last tosis on the page. Interesting. Dom Rafuna Hani Kwani Shlucha de Rahmanin. Rafuna says Rafuna Braid Ribushua says that the Kohanim are God's agents, they're not the person's agent. Pish Bekuntris, the Mairi Lin Hakrovs Karbonos, Vinafkemida Lin Yimuda no Minakoi. Interesting. Person makes a nether that he will not benefit from the Kohen, will not benefit from him. And now he has to bring a Karbon, and he gives his sacrifice to the Karbon to officiate on his behalf. So he's benefiting. When would he be benefiting? That's the question. So if you're of the opinion that it's his agent, that means he's acting on your behalf. But if he's acting on God's behalf and you're only a beneficiary, that's not considered a violation of the netter. That's a Gemara, that's a Gemara in, uh, in the Doran. If he's directly accommodating you, he's, his act is an accommodation of you, that is a violation. That's called direct benefit. The netter means I will not benefit you, means direct. No, no, no. I'm not getting involved. Mitzvahs, lav lehen on sinin dhu. Nafkimin le nimuda no amin ha-kohen, sh'ha-kohen muta l'akrev kobanosov. If we'd be shluchid didan, if we'd be the agent of the Yisrael, this is Rashi. Rashi says, what's the halachic difference if it's God's agent or the person who's bringing the sacrifice's agent? If he had made a vow not to benefit from the kohen, if the kohen made a vow, he will not benefit the Yisrael, if it's his agent, the person's agent, he's not permitted to fish on his behalf. But if it's God's agent, he's permitted. When it's a, that's the way Rashi learns this issue. So by saying it's God's agent, Cohen we resolve be, this issue. Cohen can never be of the person. What? According to that coin, if, 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 if there's two places of Ahmada, uh, then, then he can never be the agent of the person. Cohen. But Rafuna Rich says, but why is it Shluch the Rahmana? There's a rationale to it. No, but again, okay, you, I ask a question. A Kohen, if I make a vow, a netter, that I will not benefit from Kohen, could a Kohen bring my carbon? Is that considered I'm benefiting from the Kohen? So if Huna Shua says, you know something, if the Kohen is your agent, which is not possible, why is it possible to be your agent? No, why? Because there's a rationale. Because something you cannot do yourself, you cannot delegate. Okay? So you're God's agent. See, he's not doing, he's not acting on your behalf. So therefore, he's permitted to officiate on your behalf. Okay, that's where Rashi learns. Now we have a problem. Of course, the Gemara in Nadorim poses the question within the context of Mudar Hanor, and the Gemara leaves it unresolved. The Gemara has the question, is it Shluchi Derachmon, is it Shluchi Didan? Is it God's agent, or is it the person's agent? And the Gemara poses it, doesn't resolve it. According to Rashi, the Gemara should have resolved it based on the rationale of Rehun Bereb Yeshua. Logically, it's not possible. That's Tosa's question. Tema. The mashmahocha, the pshita lake. It seems from over here, the rationale is very simple. Something that you can't do yourself, you cannot delegate. Boy, honey, boy. The Gemara poses the question. Honey, kwanu shluch de rachmano havu, o shluch de dad, lo of shito. And the Gemara leaves it unresolved. Vamai, lo maisi hosam achmilser of hunbrei bishua, le mishito. The Gemara should cite the statement of hunbrei bishua. Ra- logically, it would be resolved based on this logic, this rational principle. 
So he gives an answer, which is a dochik. But this question is all according to Rashi. The way Rashi is learning the Gemara over here, Rav Hundabari B'shua's position is only to explain why that if you make a netter, the Kohen is able to act on your behalf. That's the way Rashi learns. That's the context of Rav Hundabari B'shua's statement. Why could the Kohen act on your behalf? Because the Shluchi Rachmano. And what is that based upon? The rationale, something that you're not able to do yourself, you're not able to delegate. So, the Gemara poses the question. Shluchi Rachmano, Shluchi Didan, and the Gemara leaves it unresolved. And the Gemara should cite this position, the rationale of Rav Bishua. Well, so why didn't it? So on that he answers, the Shlomar. The Urchei, the Gemara, the Kamaduch, we find the way of the Gemara throughout Shas in many locations. Lo Mivshta Elo Mi Mishno Braiso. Afagav, the Motzli Mivshta Mi Divrei Amoroi, that even though we're able to resolve it from a statement of an Amoro, but it wants to resolve it from a Mishno or a Braiso. That's what Tosa says. Because you say, maybe you could maybe find maybe some fallacy in the logic. But. It, what? He says, he, but he says you find very often. Sometimes, sometimes. he yeah. says you find. Of course, he's a Ramora. But this question and this answer, we could all—he's only given point to Rashi, because Rashi is learning our discussion. Rafundar Bishua had stated his case within the context of Mudahano. Right? That's the way Rashi learns. So we have a question. So why don't we resolve it? More in Durham speaking within the context of, of, of making a netter. So why don't we cite Rav Huna Rishua's position to resolve it? So we have to say this dochik, this answer which is pushing it, the Tana wants to resolve from Mishnah Brisa, not from the Namora. Inami Yeshlomar. He's going to explain our Gemara versus the Gemara in the Durham. Hasam Hachikim Boy Lake. The Gemara in the Durham is question is this. Hani kohani, shluch drachmon a dafke ninu. When we say that when a coin officiates, is he only the agent of God? Vlo shluchi didam klal. He's not representing the person whatsoever. Odil mahabinami shluchi didam. In addition to being God's agent, you're also the person's agent. Venafke mino shim hoya coin makrib shlo dasa bali. That if the coin, let's say, would bring the korban without the knowledge of the owner of the sacrifice. If we say that in addition to being the agent of the person, he's also the agent of God, the Corban's valid. We're saying like this. Really, factually, it has nothing to do with you're my agent. We have the principle here of Something you cannot do on your own, you cannot delegate. So, do we say you're God's agent? So, even if you're opposed to the Kohen to bring your carbon, it's irrelevant that you're opposed or not opposed. He has a responsibility. He could even bring it against the will of the owner. And the carbon's valid. Or do we say, Shluchi Dinan? means that you're doing it on my behalf. That doesn't mean that when you do it, it's I'm doing it. It's not when you officiate, I'm officiating. We are officiating, you're officiating. But with whose carbon are you officiating? You're bringing my carbon, said I'm opposed. You have no right to bring my carbon against my will. No, so this, you know, there's a question. The, 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 the different situation. Different situation. agency. It's not agency. It's not agency at all. Exactly. So therefore, there's, there's a safer called Dvarav Rov. The Kovna Rov, he has a question. Could you use a non-Jew to deliver Shalach Monos? To be your, your agent to deliver Shalach Monos? Postman, right? UPS, or whatever you want. He says you can. In the context of, of Mishloach Monos, Yishel Reo, Purim. Agency? No, because again, even though we call it a shaliach, it doesn't mean, mean, mean your shaliach. We're saying regarding bring your korban. We say, if shluchadidan, shluchadidan, as we explain now, doesn't mean that when he officiates, you're officiating. He's doing it on your behalf. That's all it means. 
That's that's the meaning of shliach here. No, no, we're, we're saying no, we're saying if it's shluchi derachmano. So even though he's doing it on your behalf, right. even if you're opposed, it's valid. But if let's say he's you, he's doing it on your behalf and you're only on your behalf, has nothing with God, and you're opposed, he's toasted says it's not valid. So we see somebody who's not qualified, the one who's, who delegates the person is not qualified. So what does the Torah say? It's due to your request he's acting. He's acting on your behalf. But he's not your agent. doesn't mean agency within the context of agency. So therefore, even by Shalach Monas, what does it mean? It means you should delegate it through a third party. Not the third party is you. doesn't mean that. So just as here, it doesn't mean the third party is the, is the Israel. The rule of the third party doesn't mean it's the one who's sending it. It means it's coming through the person. We'll discuss this tomorrow.